I had to take a break because I couldn't find my mechanical pencil. And that is time for panic. Now, I hate um, not being able to find something that drives me crazy. And because I'm such a nut, <laughs> I'm compulsive. I put things in the exact place where I, I'll never find anything, you know, with, you know, with my age and um, so much stuff on my mind and my crazy, <laughs> you know, going on, I, uh, I would never find anything if I didn't put things in the exact same place and I never move that mechanical pencil. I mean, it's always in this little thing on my desk, always. And um, I looked all around the desk. I you know, looked all on the desk. I thought when, when I bumped to plug in the computer, maybe I bumped and, um, um, you know, lodged it behind the desk or something. I couldn't find it, but um, I found it. And at a, in a weird place on the little, I have a little, um, actually it's a, not a chest of drawer, but um, it's like, it's got two drawers in it. And then there's a little platform it's sitting on and it's in the hallway. So when you walk into the house, you know, that's where you lay your keys. That's where you lay your, you know, your um, gloves, think in the wintertime, stuff like that. And it's right in the hallway as soon as you open the door right off the little mudroom area there. And um, I found it there and I'm like, what is it doing there? I didn't write anything there, you know, but anyway, enough of my craziness. And I forgot when, oh, what I was gonna talk about. Was I still hating on Writer's Digest? No, I think I'm through hating with them, on them for a while. Um, I think I was talking about conflict. That's what I was talking about. Um. Conflict also doesn't have to be, that can be as blatant, but does not have to be as, as blatant sometimes. Um, like um, in the in the new book, the um, conflict between the, what's going on in my character's life, my main character's life, and the, um, what's going on in the camp. And you know, there's plenty of conflict going on in, in, in the camp. I'm thinking that's going to give me an opportunity to write another really sensational bad guy. Who doesn't change? See, my last bad guy and my last bad girl changed on me. They changed on me because I had them both meeting. And, and, but, but I think it was part of the way I was feeling at the time, the attitude I had, what was going on in my life. See, that that's a lot of what a writer um, puts out. That's why it's so personal and that's why you don't need to be reading every page I write. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's private, it's private. Because I had them both, you know, I had her just dying of the pox, <laughs> you know, laying in a, you know, in the, in the uh, blacksmith shop, I think I had her. And I think I had um, my uh, male, I can't remember what I had in mind of him. Well, he kind of evolved. He kind of evolved. Um, the, yeah, he kind of, he kind of uh, evolved on me as the, um, uh, as the story progressed. You know, at first he was just a knuckleheaded, you know, runaway slave, a little dingy little thing running after this, you know, this, um, you know, this, this beautiful woman that's going out, this, this classy woman, this woman of, you know, uh, you know, of a, a statue and, and, uh, who has a lot of sophistication and she's off on her way to, um, a new life. And he follows her to make her pay for something she didn't do. And, you know, he go, he's crazy and all this stuff. And, and at first I heard him like, well, cause I had to, I had to, I was trying to look for a way to explain the crazy stuff he did. The same thing with the female villain -ness. I wanted a way to, um, um, explain away some of the crazy stuff they did. And at first I kind of had him hearing voices and I had him kind of having DTs and, you know, kind of, kind of crazy stuff like that. And then I, you know, I, I cut back on that cause there's no need for that. Um, also I had the female, uh, villainous kind of getting into town and not really fitting in and not really talking to anybody and not really, you know, coming, becoming part of the town and never changing her attitude towards my, 
um, the, you know, heroine of my story, the heroine of my story, never changing her attitude about her. But I think as you mature as a writer and as you mature as a person, you change it. They change. They, they just both change. Um, in the new book, there's always room for change. Like I said, the couple, when they go to the concentration camp, they got nothing but each other. They, they have nothing but each other. And, and the, the basic instinct and the basic drive, that's the word I'm looking for, to survive, for those two to survive. That, that's their um, instinct. And I still haven't figured out if they're going to or not. Um, the, um, the conflict between what's, well, see, for one thing, I think it'd be a break. Because number one, I was, in, in the beginning, the book, the new book was all about, you know, the um, nightclub woman and the officer, and that was it. it. Wasn't camp stuff. And then I thought, no. Oh, no, you got to You know, you got to You got to This, this is not a story that's, um, I don't not, not true because yeah, it happened a lot, but, um, I was thinking that it would maybe an insult to what happened, you know, belittling what, you know, making a minor point of what happened, what, how all these people are dying. Here's this woman just, you know, having all this fun with this handsome man and all this stuff and, oh, what dress should I wear? And, you know, this kind of thing like that. And I thought that's not deep enough. That doesn't say anything. That doesn't say anything. Of course it does, but you know what I mean? It, it doesn't say anything. That wasn't enough conflict because between um, the quote unquote hero and my heroine, the um, the conflict between um, the con in in the in the second version the con um, conflict was they did not want to fall in love they were fighting so hard not to fall you know not to fall in love they're just fighting it tooth and nail and it happens anyway the same thing with this one but it's like there's two different men. And because they're only uh, together occasionally, you know, every week, other week or, you know, when he, whenever he's getting away, there's get, um, whenever he can get away, there's other things that need to go on. And it just wasn't enough, just stuff around the club and things like that. So that's why I'm thinking, um, and I didn't, I wanted uh, her to have some kind of antagonist, but I also didn't want, to do the same thing again, put it that way. So I think that her, I don't know if she's gonna have a, a villain. I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe something will come to me, but she's got enough to worry about. I mean, she's got these kids to worry about. She's got being a member of resistance to worry about. And she's fooling around with this guy. She's got that to worry about. And she's got the show and she's got this. Oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. I almost forgot. Um, when in the second version, when my uh, character happens to mention to one of the other characters, Maritota, she has a very best friend that has my sister's name because my one of my sisters is the only one with a French name. And um, she's talking about uh, his aftershave or something she says. And uh, Madame says, well, what, what did he say? And my character says something like, oh, he, um, he said there's a lot of brass in town and that's why he you know, had, a, was wearing a different aftershave or something like that, not even realizing the information she's giving. And I think that would be a safety net for her that the information she's getting, just like when he goes to his new, um, duty station, when he leaves to go to his, um, uh, assignment, you know, my damn asked her questions and well, where, where did he say he was going? You know, and she's like, I, I don't know. I think to the east somewhere. I, I don't know. And that's when I think, um, I think I decided, because I, remember, I couldn't, I couldn't understand. I couldn't um, figure out when my dad finds out who he actually is. 
uh, he's a commander of these um, um, people, you know, ta a special, ta special task force. There's a word, I can't say it. Um, that he, um, when does she know? When does she know his identity? When does she know and does she tell my character exactly who he is? You know, and also too, I thought what would be interesting was, um, would my character be willing to spy on him? Would she be willing to, I mean, besides the fact she's kind of scared of him, you know, and, um, but like I said, they're, they're one coin, but both different sides. And he, he could, he could, he can, he can sense a sort of, um, masochism and a kind of insecurity in her that she's like hidden from everybody else because everybody thinks, oh, she's the beautiful mamzelle so-and-so, you know, and she, you know, and she has all these clothes and all these, this jewelry and all these men love her and she's, you know, popular and, you know, all this stuff like that. And, but inside there's something, you know, and, and you have to, you have to, you have to be able to, um, relay that, even though it's not the word I'm looking for, it'll come to me in a minute. Um, without saying it, you can't say she's insecure. You can't, you know, say that, you know, and I think, I don't know. He, he had, even, even though it may be a bit of a stereotype that he would be a little sadistic, a little cruel, you know, um, to her because it's one, um, I think, I, I think I said it before that something he says to her was that, yes, all, you know, Negro women are attracted to white men because white men have power and their men don't. And that's when she jumps on him and goes, well, I beg your pardon. You know, my father made a, a, a life for us here and sent for me and my mom and he fought in the first world war and she kind of takes up and see, and that's my, that's my, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, good male character, you know, good uh, uh, role model male character, even though he's not in the story, um, the way she talks about him, the way she feels about her, her father, how he brought them from, you know, Southern United States to, you know, to France to live. And she's been educated and um, her, um, now he and her, his, her mother live in, um, England apparently very well from like, I don't know. I don't know. You don't know if you're a good writer. You don't know. I mean, you should have some direction. Now you should have some direction on me wandering crazy, which is funny because that's how I really started the first book. Just wandering. I mean, I had an idea. I, I knew like I always lecture, know the last line of your book. When you write the first word of that, to that book, you should know the last line. Now, how you get there, just like if I want to go downtown and I want to take public transportation, I can take the 57, I can take the three, I can take the 45. They're all going downtown, but they're all going different ways. And if I was driving downtown, I could go straight. I could take all the back roads. You know, I could, I could, so how you get there doesn't matter, but it also has to have some kind of structure. Or oh, that made me think about something funny. Um, I called a cab to go to the VA once and uh, the cab driver was from um, Somalia and he was talking about how bad the um, traffic was. And we had a, um, and we have a big highway, I-5 is the big, you know, uh, freeway here. And I mean, to get to the VA hospital, it's 15 minutes, you know, you jump on I-5 and, and, and take the exit and boom, you're there. And this guy went all the way through town, all the back uh, uh, stretches, every little back street. And I'm, and I'm, I'm in the back seat thinking, where is this guy? Take, is he taking me somewhere that I don't want to be? Where are we going? And it kept looking like we were getting closer, closer to the V, but we were going all this way. And then finally it dawned on me. He went, he, um, he was going the back way where there was no traffic. And I'm thinking, suppose I'd had a, like an appointment. Suppose I'd had to be there at a certain time. This guy's meandering through the city. I couldn't believe it when he got to hit I-5 and then 
well, I'm going to be that kind of driver too. So, you know, I'm only, you know, I'm going to be that kind of driver too, but I just thought it was odd. So, um, yeah, I was talking about direction. You, your reader maybe should know everything you know. Now, you should know, kind of, but be willing to change. Like I said, if I had stubbornly, you know, made both these characters how they had began, be, how they begun, then um, I wouldn't have been doing them justice and I wouldn't have allowed them to evolve. And as they, um, as I matured as a writer and as a person, they evolved until, until the, the point where, um, my female villain kind of had villain this kind of has a happily ever after, you know, kind of thing happened to her. And, um, my, um, a male villain, uh, he has a, he, he dies, he does die. But when he does, he dies free and he dies with dignity. And he, and I think that's all we can ask for, you know, and he chose to, you know, he chose to die the way he wanted to die. He had one, cause he, he says that when he realizes that he's going to be extradited back to Georgia, he has this feeling of resentment and it's a new emotion to him. Because usually he's, you know, either, you know, been trotting down, beat down, you know, so bad all his life. And then he, um, you know, and then he, then he's on the run. Then he's an outlaw. Then he's free, you know, and he's kind of, you know, falling behind these outlaws and kind of living their life kind of precariously living his life through theirs. Then he gets to the town where she is. He's followed her all this way. And when he gets to the town where she is, then she's his main goal. She's his main, you know. Um, object of like all his hey he he doesn't even, he isn't even logical you know he's escaped from a plantation he's moving north but instead of going on to Canada he's gonna follow this woman you know and make her and and try and you know destroy her just because he just hates her and thinks she's responsible for his you know friend's um, demise um, he also for the first time sees um, black men who are more than just, you know, jiggling juggy bunnies, you know, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, who have made something out of their lives, you know, even in this day and age, even in how hard it was, who have, um, who can read and write and have their, in, are in business and, you know, things like that. I want a positive uh, black role model. And in the new book, the positive black role model, male role model is, um, um, is my character's father, even though he's not in the book, he's mentioned and, you know, there, there's things said about him that makes him very, very positive. Um, the same thing with my, uh, main character, she's, she's very complicated. She's very, very complicated. Um, she sees the world I want to say in shades of gray, in shades of gray, because he's, um, here she is, you know, with this man, she met him when he, she didn't know who he was, you know, she couldn't just turn the feelings off that she had for him. She has to, um, you know, then she has to deal with that and what's going on around her and these responsibilities she has and where she, um, you know, what she has to do. And I don't believe in my female characters being addicted in any kind of way to, you know, alcohol or drugs or any way. I, I don't, I don't want that. And it's one um, scene to show, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about that yet because I'm running out of time and I'm gonna fold my clothes. I'm gonna go to dry and fold my clothes off up while I listen to this. And then I'm gonna make, I'm gonna write it down before I forget. I'm going to, um, I'll talk about that in a minute.